Nationwide protests of President-elect Donald Trump have continued across the nation, including here in Colorado, ranging from rallies at the steps of the Capitol to high school walkouts. News of Trump naming the head of Breitbart News, Steve Bannon, as his chief strategist only added, to the, added fuel to the fire earlier this week. Uh, David, we, we heard this morning that uh, Jeff Sessions is likely going to be named, uh, at least nominated, as the attorney general in uh, Donald Trump's administration. Uh, is this going to unite what, at least a week ago, was a splintered left? Hard to say. Um, some Democrats want to work with Trump on, on issues like infrastructure, where, where they agree. Uh, it, about a decade ago, the Independence Institute had the founder of Breitbart News, the late Andrew Breitbart, out, out to speak, and he was a, a great speaker. Um, and what, after he died and Steve Bannon took the place over, uh, it, it's, it's very sad what is, have, what's happened to a once important and, and constructive uh, news organization. Especially if Andrew's name on it. I mean, he's really a, a, yeah. a guy that did not represent what it is. And, and had, had high standards for, for integrity. Mm -hmm. um, our Constitution guarantees the right of people peaceably to assemble. So as long as people want to keep on peaceably protesting, good for them. That, that's their choice and that, that's absolutely their right and, and probably as they see it, it's their, it's their civic duty. There's a difference between legitimate peaceable protest and what's been going on in a lot of places where so-called protesters have been rioting in Portland where they shut down I-25 in uh, here that's not that's the kind of thing that the press had itself was clutching its pearls and in hysterics might happen if Trump won and these people are showing that they are just the mirror image of the most extreme uh, dystopian vision of the Trump supporters, and they're they're just as bad as that imaginary thing, and they're even worse because they're actually real, and they're one of the reasons that Trump won. People in this country across the political spectrum are sick of this privileged thugocracy, which thinks because it's upset about something, it gets to have a riot and then, oh, we'll, we'll show our concern for racial justice in Charlotte by looting the NASCAR souvenir store or by shutting down people who are going from one place to another, preventing ambulances from moving. People have died because of these protests, because of the impediments of transportation for, for medical care. People have been assaulted by these protesters for having different political views. They are un-American, and I hope law enforcement protects the rights of everyone to peaceably protest and starts to crack down on the thugocracy that is unpeaceable and violent. Natasha, the, the, the protests, regardless of where they're at in the country, are unlikely to change a whole lot of minds or policies in Washington. But what do these protests uh, affect? How do they affect us here locally? Well, I think locally, it, whether it's protests or conversations around our dinner table, there's a lot of discussion happening in this country right now about what America is, who, what we're going to become, how that comes together, and, and whether you were a Trump supporter or a Hillary supporter or somewhere in between, which it seems like most people were, <laughs> um, what that means for the future of this country. Now, something that um, I've heard again and again, and I think actually the protests for whatever side it is, um, some of the racist um, uh, actions that we've seen, I mean, Facebook is full of those these days, it, is a sense that people w don't understand each other. And that's where the individual level, it's in, at this point, it, what happens in Washington, D.C. matters, but it's more important what happens in our homes. It's who we, who we spend time with. It's who we know. And it's, it's a challenge that I'm making to everyone I know. If you didn't know a Trump supporter, go find one. If you didn't know a Hillary supporter, go find one. If you don't know people from other class levels in America, Go find those people, befriend them, find out what these differences are, and start to find some common ground for moving forward. Because otherwise, I think people are compelled, you know, feel it's their civic duty to go out and protest. And 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 I just think that on an individual level, the best way that we can do this is when in our personal lives with our personal connections. Noel, do you think these protests get converted into uh, other productive energy in months down the road? I hope so. I certainly hope so. They have a right to be out there. And I have to take objection to the word thugocracy. Thug is a baited word, and we know it. We know what that con your, what images you're bringing up. And you can't call those 5,000 people out there last Thursday night thugs. They were from all races, ethnicities, male, female, age groups. 
Um, energy like this, though, is hard to sustain. I mean, this isn't like something you can go out and protest one night and then think you've done something. You've got to get to work. You've got to make phone calls. You've got to write letters. You've got to reach out and talk to people. You've got to be engaged, even at your city council and your state legislature. I mean, this is the White House, and sure, he has a lot of power, but your day-to-day -day life is more impacted by the laws and ordinances that are being written on the state and local level. Get engaged. But yeah, this energy is hard s to sustain. I think um, today's news of Jeff, Jeff Sessions being appointed might add some more fuel mm -hmm. and passion to it, but I think we, we will just have to see. Ed, uh, you've long time covered the state legislature. Do you think any of this, the energy from protests, bleed into any any sort of agenda at the legislature next year? Well, that's what I'm curious about, what the agenda of the protests are. I mean, this brings me back to, say, the Occupy Wall Street protests, which actually had a little bit clearer agenda. There were specific issues that people were protesting against then, um, although it did not have a sustainable energy. That died out fairly quickly, and if you can tell by the 2014 and 2016 elections, didn't have a lot of influence, although you could argue that some of those protesters did become the biggest Bernie Sanders supporters and at least uh, fuel that candidacy. Um, you know, when I read si about people carrying signs in Philadelphia saying President Trump must go, you have to ask, what does that mean? Are you going to campaign for the next four years? Are we going to go from a cycle of, you know, two-year-long campaigns to four-year-long campaigns at this point? Um, does that mean you're not a fan of democracy anymore? Um, I I'm surprised how few of these protests have actually targeted the Electoral College. Uh, you know, if, if there's if there's an area people could go after, that would be it. I would suggest it would be for the 2020 election if you want to have a good discussion of it, not the election where the candidates knew what rules they were playing under in 2016. Um, but uh, it's that's the, the tricky part with these protests is, is where do they go? What do they want? What are the specific things? If you see them convert into, I want the following two cabinet members not to be confirmed, maybe they'll go somewhere. If it's just a general message of, I don't like what happened, it's hard to figure out how that translates into action.